Okay, let's imagine there's this random kid and the US military gives him complete control of the assets to complete the simple mission of destabilizing the communist dictatorship of North Korea. That's the Eternals in a nutshell. See, the kid is Chloe Zhao, the US military is Marvel Studios, the mission is making a Marvel movie, and the tragedy that follows is the Eternals. This movie feels like what would happen if you tried to kill off a Hydra by chopping off as many heads as possible, as quickly as possible. Every time you chopped off a head, two more would grow back, and you'd instantly chop off these two new heads, growing 4, then 8, then 16, 32, 64... <sighs> Let me elaborate. The Eternals is about this group of super-powered immortal guardians called Eternals sent to Earth in caveman times by the Celestials, a group of god-level space titans. See, the Eternals were given the one task of killing Deviants, a bunch of super-predators that eat intelligent life, and thus should not interfere with any conflict that doesn't include the Deviants. Okay, fair enough, this makes sense. The film has so far some rules for itself that seem pretty straightforward. Number one, the power structure is Celestial, Eternal, Deviant, with the Celestial being insanely powerful to the point of being a literal force of nature, Eternals being the equivalent of high-level superheroes like Thor or Captain Marvel, the Deviants being like mid- to high-level monster enemies, and number two, the Eternals cannot interfere with any conflict unless it pertains to the Deviants, so I guess that would mean they cannot interfere with any human conflict. I'd also believe they would stay in their spaceship for most of their time on Earth, because even remaining in contact with humanity could influence a bunch of conflict. Simple, right? Yeah. Apparently not, because they go into shape the course of human history and development. They literally, in the first scene, upgrade a cave boy's knife into a fancy eternal knife. In the first scene, they, up they, they upgrade a knife. Really? You know what knives are used for, other than cutting food and whittling wood? Stabbing knives? Knives, knives are used for stabbing. Just go to the UK and you quickly find out that I'm correct. Also, there's this one scene where the inventor Eternal is asking to give ancient civilizations the steam engine. Then he later has this scene where he's crying about the devastation caused by the fat man in Hiroshima. This was obviously supposed to be an emotional scene, but bro, you didn't see this coming? Really, in freaking 7,000 years, you never freaking wondered what would happen if people weaponized the tech you gave them. It's like giving people the ability to generate electricity and being shocked when they make a taser. Come on. This film loves breaking its own rules and I really don't know why, it's not fun. It's literally some sick form of cinematic self-harm. In Endgame there was a clear set of rules, for example time travel, which is an especially difficult rule to maintain. Using this they established the different versions of Thanos and how the Thanos they fight in Endgame is a version who doesn't know the Avengers and therefore has less respect for them than the Thanos from Infinity War. By the way, fun fact, Thanos is actually an Eternal and the reason he looks weird is because of a mutation called the Deviant Gene, making him part Deviant. Hmm. Thanos is a literal deviant. Doesn't that make his conflict with Earth a deviant threat? So why didn't the Eternals help? Because Phase 4, because Chloe Zhao, because Marvel died with Stan Lee. Honestly, the writing in Eternals scared me. I've never had such a Marvel movie seem so lost. Honestly, how in good goodness did this happen? This movie tries to cover PTSD, the value of life, letting go of those you love, conscience over duty, blurred morality, and like five other things I forgot classic case of quantity over quality and pair that with the 10 different main characters okay wait i need to talk about these dan characters because for the life of me i just could not remember their names after the movie i was conscious of this and asked myself to recite as many names as i could remember the list follows icarus athena sarah gilgamesh fasto druid kaigar and sprite each of them was hilariously one-dimensional. In fact, I'll give a complete in-depth to each of the characters' personalities and goals. First is Icarus. He was Cersei's husband or something, and is completely devoted to the Celestials, until he isn't. Next is Cersei. She was married to Icarus. Then Athena. She had PTSD for the first half or quarter of the movie, then she didn't. Then Gilgamesh. He took care of Athena, then died. Then Hephaestus. He liked humans, then didn't like humans, then liked humans again. Next is Druig. He doesn't like violence and wants to control everyone, but doesn't want to control everyone. Then Kingo. He ran around and did stuff. Next is Sprite. She's a tiny kid and has a crush on Icarus. Next is Makari. She's a speedster that can't talk. In other words, she's faster than the speed of sound. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. And finally, Ajax. She was devoted to the Celestials until she wasn't, then she died. Those are their whole characters. In complete honesty, those are their characters. My favorite in the dang movie wasn't even one of them. It was an Indian manager who had an infinite amount of cameras at his disposal and did not hesitate to film whatever the moment demands. And with zero sarcasm, I would trade the whole fourth phase of the MCU so far just to have one good Marvel movie following him. By the way, remember rule one, remember the rule that states the power balance in the Eternals. Remember how the Celestials are God-level beings that create freaking stars? Yeah, these Jokers managed not to just imprison one, not to just put it to sleep, they killed it. They managed to freaking kill a celestial. A celestial. Not any celestial, 
But Tiamat, the dreaming celestial, easily one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful celestial in the comics. I know there's a theory that Tiamat willingly sacrificed himself for the planet when they joined minds, but I literally had to research that after the movie. I'm going to be real. I was actually looking forward to how they're going to stop the celestial emergence. It actually seemed like a crazy problem that would spawn a crazy cool plan. But no, she turns it into a rock. And mind you, this all spawns from a random moment in the middle of the movie where she turns a deviant into a tree. Or makes like, like a tree grow out of a deviant. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Am I just stupid, guys? Tell me. I'm, tell me I'm, I'm just being an idiot. Because for the life of me, I'm just so confused. I'm so confused. Speaking of stupid, my favorite part of this movie was the Celestials for the seconds they are actually on screen. The design and the effects were pretty sick nasty in my opinion. And pretty cool. I absolutely love them because of their epicness. But dude, are they stupid. They better have some crazy plan throughout the MCU that requires them to mess up this many times. Okay, first of all, why did they create Eternals with disabilities like Makari? There was zero purpose to having a disability, except making her more of a liability in battle. And why did she stay disabled, by the way? You best be jiggered if you think they can fix that with all their tech. Also, why in the heck are some Eternals kids? How the frick does that help them eradicate deviants? In fact, why aren't they just proper robots like Vision that only exist to defend? Or just make it impossible for them to kill Celestials with mental programming, or not giving them the power level to do it? Honestly, guys, I think I'm going mad. This is what happens when you put someone who's directed less than five low-budget films no one's ever heard of in charge of a freaking Marvel movie. You can tell she had no direction and thus got ideas from the people around her and tried to implement all these ideas at once. She frankly bit more than she could chew and buffed it all out all over the audience's faces. Two hundred million dollars were put into this movie. Two hundred freaking million dollars. That's the GDP of Kiribati, the small island nation that makes that weird shape on the IDL. You know how many children could be fed with $200 million? I digress. Two hours and 37 minutes. That's how long Eternals is. You'll never get that time back, ever. Really, in two hours, 37 minutes, you could actually go to the gym and get a workout. You could talk to your estranged mother or father. You could even just think about your life and plan for the future. You could just go outside and take a good walk enjoying nature. Realize that I review movies and shows. I have to go there and consume this drivel to report back to you guys. And like me, you have a choice. If you just enjoy consuming bright colors and moving pictures, then any Marvel movie will be a win for you. But just ask yourself, long and hard before watching this movie, ask yourself if this is really how you want to spend two and a half hours of the only existence you'll ever get. Peace out, bros and make the right decision.